This video critically examines how staff recognize risk from coronavirus in the healthcare setting, suggesting it may not be where expected. Globally, within a short space of time, this virus has challenged our approach to daily life, including rethinking infection control practices. It is less than four months since this virus was first recognized, so we are learning and adapting in a rapidly changing environment as shown here. Where there is sustained transmission of COVID-19, we now regard any patient, irrespective of symptoms, as a risk. At the top of this slide is a timeline starting three days before a case becomes symptomatic. Infected individuals may excrete the virus three days before the onset of symptoms. This may lead to transmission as described in this publication from Singapore. Data from China suggests one-eighth of transmission events were from pre-symptomatic individuals. Lastly, this commentary on an article in Nature confirming transmission from the upper respiratory tract before people are aware they have an infection. Up to 20% of patients have mild or minimal symptoms. Contrast this with staff experience of hospital admissions, which is of a virus causing severe disease. Clinical training is based around recognizing and assessing severity of clinical symptoms. Identification of infected individuals with this virus is counterintuitive as infected individuals may display minimal or no symptoms. The two meter rule is therefore applied to decide whether PPE is required. If within two meters of an asymptomatic patient, PPE is required including a fluid resistant surgical mask. When an infected patient coughs, large respiratory droplets are expelled, which rapidly fall to the ground, but can travel up to two meters. This measurement is thus the basis of social distancing. We will now look at infection prevention in the community. Social distancing is a key effective infection control practice in the community, utilized not just by the general public, but by many businesses. To help limit the number of people in store at once, you might be asked to queue when you arrive. We ask you to stand two metres apart, the markings on the ground will help. There will be a cleaning station to clean a trolley or basket. We ask that you keep this distance at the checkout too. The screen is to help protect us and you. Social distancing, cleaning of highly touched objects and the use of barriers to droplet spread are some of the important infection control interventions used. Let us return to the healthcare setting. Infection control guidance is based around preventing the transmission of infection from patients. In our minds, we create a divide with patients and infection on one side and staff on the other. Microbes do not observe boundaries. What is the risk from staff? Returning to the criteria for regarding every patient as a coronavirus risk, let us apply this to staff. Is there sustained transmission among staff? The answer is yes, but this is likely to be at a higher rate than in the community due to the large number of infected individuals in hospital. Thus, an asymptomatic patient from the community for whom staff take precautions is likely to be a lower risk than colleagues with whom we often take no precautions. Staff naturally work as teams, often in close proximity less than two metres apart for prolonged periods of time. Asymptomatic staff, as would be expected, have tested positive for SARS-CoV-2 virus. Therefore, should the two metre rule on PPE not also be applied between staff? Staff are good at observing the two metre rule with patients, but apply the rule poorly between themselves. For example, these two healthcare workers who don't know each other are in close proximity whilst at work, but would behave quite differently in the community and socially distance, the red circle indicating the two metre distance. Colleagues naturally come up to you with charts, tablets or mobile phones and invade the two metre space. In the supermarket where breaking the two metre rule is a necessity, as at a checkout, screens analogous to a surgical mask and eye protection are used to interrupt droplet transmission. 
The sessional use of masks will reduce the risk from when staff must come within two metres of each other in clinical areas. The mask reduces the risk of transmission from unrecognised infected individuals, as well as protecting uninfected staff. But it's important to realise preventing infection is more than PPE. It is also regular cleaning of surfaces, hand decontamination, not putting your hands near your face and obeying the two metre rule when, when not wearing PPE. It is difficult to accept colleagues with whom you have worked in close proximity for years as being your highest risk of acquiring the virus within the hospital. Additionally, our natural instinct is to gravitate towards each other, breaking the two metre rule to facilitate communication. Social distancing is well established in the community and some industries. But is less so in healthcare in the following examples. Social distancing, public health education, is almost exclusively aimed at the general public. This video that follows from the European Centre for Disease Control has been adapted for healthcare workers. <music> It is most important you look after yourselves. You are doing a wonderful job. But remember, the risk may not be where you think it is. <laughs>